right, how about a little tribute to one of our favorite badass killers, Jason Voorhees. With the remake coming out, I got a lot of requests to do something with the Friday the 13th movies. Well, why not? The first thing that comes to mind is the death scenes. Jason has some of the best kills in horror history, but there's other moments in these films I want to honor as well. These are just some of my personal favorite scenes, and it was real tough to narrow it down, but I did my best, and here it is. My top 13 Friday the 13th moments. Number 13 from part 6, Jason Lives. Of the whole franchise, this one has my favorite opening scene. It starts out at night with some creepy shots of the woods, perfectly setting the right mood. Then we go into a cemetery where someone's trying to dig up Jason's grave to destroy his body once and for all. Of course, Jason's resurrected by, what else, a bolt of lightning. This whole scene is like a throwback to the classic monster movies of the 30s and 40s. I dig it. Then of course, Jason makes his kill. You don't fuck with Jason. Ooh, look at that. Zoom in on the eye, and then it does the James Bond thing. That's how you start a movie. Number 12, from the original. I think I gotta go with the arrow through Kevin Bacon's neck. That's brutal. Number 11, from part five, A New Beginning. Come on, don't be like that. This is probably the most bizarre entry in the series. And anyway, uh, I got two chocolate bars, see? Here we have a guy with an axe. Leave me alone! And a guy with a chocolate bar. Want a bite? Here. I'll just put it over here. And later on, when you're hungry, you can have it. The two do not mix. Well, if that's the way you feel, forget it, Vic. Just forget it. But I think you're really out of line. <laughs> It's so uncalled for. Like, what was that, all over a chocolate bar? Number 10, from part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Well, Jason's essentially an indestructible zombie killer in a mask. After eight movies, when this guy tries to take him out with his bare fists, we know it's not going to end well. Finish him. Fatality. Yeah. Number nine, from part four, the final chapter. Final, yeah, I know. I've always wondered what this guy's watching. Is it a workout show? Like, what the hell's going on? Shit. And of course, Jason comes out with the hacksaw. Ooh, nice work. Number eight, from part two. Look at that ass. What a perfect target. Ow. I don't know why, but I always remember this scene. Number seven from part four. Corey Feldman just being a fucking freak. He's playing video games while wearing a weird alien mask. Who the hell wears costumes when they play video games? He also has this monster puppet that's real elaborate. What kid ever had anything like that? Of course, at the end, he shaves his head and goes psychotic. After four movies, he's the only one to be able to kill Jason Voorhees. What a freak. I'll always remember him as the voice of Donatello. Name rings a bell. <laughs> <laughs> Number six from part four. You can tell I like part four a lot. Well, this one is simply the Crispin Glover dance. Look at that. The man is possessed. I was at a Q&A with Crispin Glover himself, and he told us that the song he was originally dancing to was ACDC's Back in Black. Man, ACDC should have been the whole soundtrack. Number five from Jason X, an incredible Sub-Zero murder. Oh, but he's not done yet. Ooh, that's awesome. Number four, from part eight, Jason Takes Manhattan. 
just some guys on the sidewalk listening to the radio when all of a sudden, man, what was that about? Jason fucking hates that music. Number three from part seven, The New Blood. This is the first movie that introduces Kane Hodder in the role of Jason, and his stunt work really kicks ass. What stands out is the whole end sequence. It's Jason battling against telekinetic powers. He gets electrocuted, jumps through glass, gets hit by a couch, gets hit by potted plant, which has a decapitated head in it. It's almost like slapstick. A roof collapses on him, he gets knocked through a staircase, stabbed with flying nails, sprayed with gasoline, and set on fire. He really puts up with some shit. Number two, the sleeping bag murder. This is a gag that started in part seven, but it's perfected in Jason X. That is what I call fucking hilarious. And now for number one. There's so many great moments in the series, it was hard to pick only 13, but the most significant of all, I think, goes back to the very first time you ever see Jason. In the first movie, his mom's the killer, and as far as we know, Jason's dead. Nothing supernatural happens until this very moment. It's one of the very few times in horror movies when I truly did not expect it. There's nothing more disturbing than a young, decaying child zombie pulling you down into the depths of Crystal Lake. It's a haunting memory I always think back to after all the sequels, the funny characters, hilarious moments, senseless nude scenes, and the horrific body count that keeps piling up. Eleven movies later, now with the remake that makes twelve, the series will go on and will always be there as long as there's a Friday the 13th.